Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm gonna to tell you guys what a stock is here. So this is a good video for those of you that just don't understand a lot of the details behind it. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about you know pricing a little tiny bit, um, but more or less what is a stock, what does it mean, um, and why you should be investing a little bit here from a general perspective here. So to start off with here, um, you know, a stock is also known as equity, which we will see in a second why it's called that. Um, a stock is nothing more um, than ownership in a firm, firm, company, whatever you want to call it here. So you just own a portion of that company here and you are going to share, what does this entitle you to? This entitles you to both profits and losses of the firm. So, you know, when stock prices go up, we have profits. When stock prices go down, we have losses. Um, but let's look at the accounting perspective on this because I think it makes it a little more clear. I know, bear with me, it's accounting. It's a little boring here. But bear with me, we will explain what that means, um, what's driving essentially the stock price um, from an accounting perspective, which is overly simplified, but it really helps understand what's going on. And then we'll talk about kind of the, you know, more complexities of how the market actually prices these things and how stock prices move. But there's an equation in accounting. Um, so this is known as the balance sheet. If you're familiar with accounting, there's a little equation for the balance sheet and it's going to be assets um, are equal to liabilities plus shareholder equity. Uh, this is where the term equity comes from when we talk about stocks, talk about equity stocks, it's the same thing here. Um, let's just go through a quick example here explaining how a brand new firm is going to start up with here. Um, and then we'll kind of explain how the equity piece gets impacted just based off this simple accounting equation here. Um, so let's say we start a firm and we gather some investors. Um, and let's say we started off with $100, right? Um, so we're just going to set up at the beginning here. We're going to say uh, one share in this company is equal to $1. And to run and start this company, all I need is $100. With $100 um, of cash, I can start my awesome business here. It's a really simple business, right? You don't need a lot of cash. Um, so if you have $100 to start uh, and they're a dollar a share, you say this is going to be 100 shares. Um, so when we start the firm, we got $100 in cash, so I'm gonna put cash here. This is our asset. Um, currently we have no loans or liabilities. I don't owe anybody any money at this point. Um, and then shareholders equity is going to be $100. Now what this means is that there is $100 worth of shares in the business. So the investors, the shareholders here, those holding the stocks, gave me $100. So the company now has $100 in cash. Um, the shareholders equity piece is just going to mean uh, those shareholders own that $100 worth of value. And for today's example, we are going to ignore liabilities here, but if you went out and issued some bonds, you need some extra cash, you would increase your assets by the cash, you would increase your liabilities um, by the value of those bonds, right? I owe that money back. Uh, that would be that transaction here, but that's just the liabilities piece covers. But in our example, let's say we're going to go build some products here, right? We say we make some wood widgets. Um, we're gonna go out and buy some wood, so buy wood. And so we minus that $10 in cash that we spent for the wood, okay? So that's gonna take us now uh, down to $90. But we also received um, $10 in wood, which is an asset, right? It's your inventory or your basic material that you have in the fund. Um, and this side still adds up to 100. So we still have $100. And this makes our uh, balance sheet $100 in value because it's $90 cash, $10 in wood. It's going to be equal to zero, which is going to be our liabilities. And it's still going to be equal to $100 in shareholder equity, right? The investors still own the cash and the wood that was purchased, um, and it's still only worth $100. Now, let's say you go and you make some, some wood widgets with them. You take the wood, which is the base material, uh, you carve it into some really cool product. Um, I don't know, you create some cool tool or device, a pencil or something, um, and you end up creating these and you sell these now, right? And let's pretend there's no no labor cost here. I'm not paying you in for this, I'm just doing it for free. Um, and we go out and we're going to now sell our widget for $20. What ends up happening um, is we now get an increase. So we add in $20 in cash. Um, we sold the wood. So now our assets is going to decrease because we you know, got rid of that. So let's say we minus now our 
$10 in wood. And this is going to give us, right, $20 minus $10. We have a $10 profit. And we add um, that $10 profit now to what we had here. So now we had $100 of value originally. Uh, we minus 10 because we sold the wood. We add 20 in. And what we're going to do is add in our $10 in profit. And now we're going to have $110 in assets. We still have $0 in liabilities. And now our shareholder equity is what makes the equation balance. Um, so we're going to have now $110 in shareholder equity here. So we can put equity up top and these are liabilities. But what this means now is now the company has right an extra $10 in cash because it went out, it bought some wood, made some products, sold it, made a $10 profit here. And so now we have an extra $10. We have $110 in cash now. Well, the shareholders still own 100% of the company. So looking at this from a shareholder's perspective, if you owned uh, $1 on day one, and now let's say on day two, after we sold all of our shares right, we now have $110, so $110. Uh, we still have 100 shares, and this is going to give us a $1.10 share valuation here. So the new share price is going to be $1.10. Um, now, this is going to be a 10% profit right? Your $1 share went up to $1.10. You made 10% profit here. Um, that's how the profits impact shareholders. Now, if you had a loss here, let's say it went down and you lost $10, um, you'd have $90 in cash. Uh, you would have $90 in shareholder equity here. You would do $90 divided by 100. There's still 100 shares. And now your shares would only be worth um, 90 cents. Okay, so you took a loss on that. Um, but you share the profits and losses here. And this is really how a company works. Now, if you wanted to, you know, realize that profit, you would need to sell uh, your share at $1.10 to somebody else here. Now, companies that go public, we call them IPOs. Um, an IPO is anything that you see on the stock exchange. Uh, it's an initial public offering. And all this means is the company went out uh, to the stock exchange, it listed its shares on the stock exchange, uh, and then people can buy and sell on that. So if it's a standard stock, you can go out there and say, hey, it's worth $1.10, I'm going to sell the share for $1.10, and you'll make your 10 cent profit here, uh, your 10% return, and you can walk away from the table and go do something else with that. Um, but again, the firm itself realized that the cash never leaves the company when you buy and sell stocks, okay? The company's not involved in that. All that is transferring is a piece of paper, which is the share that you own. So nowadays it's a digital contract. That digital contract says that, that you own one share, whatever it's worth. And so the accounting value here is going to be that one share is worth now $1.10. When you sell that to somebody else, um, you're just going to give that digital contract, that share in that company, that you know percentage claim in that firm to somebody else here. Now, this is the accounting view. Um, let's look at the stock market view because obviously in the real world, right, we're not sitting here doing some sort of calculation and this is exactly the stock price. Uh, you know there are people out there that are buying and selling stocks at different prices and there's what's called a bid-ask spread, which is, you know, someone's offering to buy at a specific price, somebody's offering to sell it at a specific price when they cross, uh, the transaction's going to actually clear here. Now, the way that we actually value stocks in the stock exchange in the stock market is we're going to look at the time so time is going to be some sort of horizon here. And we're going to say, okay, this is going to be, I'm going to call it profit loss, right? Profit's anything positive, loss can be anything negative. And the question being is, what is the firm going to do in the future? So what is that stock's value in the future here, right? What is that accounting piece? Is it going to go from a dollar a share to a dollar ten? Um, maybe they sold their wood widgets for more money next month. Um, so maybe you have some sort of trend here. It's a small company. It's growing. It's slowly getting more and more profitable. Maybe it brings in better employees. Maybe it gets better machinery. So things get cheaper to make. Um, and you'd expect, you know, this, this line to go up here, uh, this being the stock price or more specifically, right, the profitability or the equity in the firm here. So when we look at that accounting equation, um, we're trying to figure out what's going to happen to the firm here. Um, now, again, if it looked like it was going to be very profitable like this, you would probably be willing to pay more than $1.10 for that share because you're looking at it in the long run, right? And 
made 10% a day, maybe in a hundred days, if it keeps compiling and gets better and better and better, I might make like a, you know, 70% return on this stock maybe in a year. This is crazy, you know, unheard of returns. But if you're going to make a lot of money on this, you're going to be willing to pay a little bit more for it today um, because you're expecting to get more cash from that stock over the time. Now, there's also a negative side to this. What if um, the stock goes down in value, right? Uh, what if, you know, the materials that we build the product out of get more expensive, but I can't pass it along to a consumer, or maybe I can only pass along part of that. So you have inflation, for example, right? Uh, cost of wood, maybe forests burn down, there's not enough supply now, and all kinds of things, maybe politics, maybe government regulation changes. So now it's more expensive for me to sell my products. Maybe I can't even make the products anymore. Um, what ends up happening here is now you're going to have a loss and this is going to drive the stock price down. Now, everybody's going to have different opinions because none of us can see the future here. So when you're looking at a stock price, we're trying to figure out what are going to be the profit and cash flows from that company across the life of the loan. And then we discount them back with something called um, time value of money. I'm gonna call it TVM here. Uh, we're not gonna cover that in this video. Um, but that's kind of how the stock market actually looks at and values the ownership in a firm. You're trying to figure out how well is that firm going to do over the life? Uh, what profits and losses is this firm going to see? And then we try to discount those back to today and say, okay, if it's gonna make a bunch of money in the future, I'm willing to pay a bit more for it today. Or if it's gonna take huge losses in the future, um, I don't wanna pay a dollar a share, right? I wanna pay like 70 cents for that share. Um, but that is what a stock is in a company. It is simply just ownership in that firm. You are 100% vested in that decisioning, that processing, that firm. Um, please realize there are a lot of things that impact share value here from who is running the company, um, macroeconomic factors, the like government regulations, lots and lots of things impact uh, stock prices. And that's why stock prices are constantly moving is everybody's looking at the future and trying to assess how that is going to impact this specific firm. And that is what's going to drive that firm's pricing here. Now, that is why people typically invest though in the stock market as well. You're hoping to give money that you have that you're not using today to a company right? So even if you buy a share from somebody else, they get out. Uh, you now own that right, that share, that equity in that company, and that company is going to now perform over time. You give them money in a sense of, you know, buying that share, uh, hoping that they can use that money now to make a profit and do better things for society with it, generate a profit out of that process. Um, and then in the long run, you can eventually, when you get old and you want to retire, you can sell those shares to somebody else, take your money out and spend that for your retirement here. So that is how a stock works. It is just simply the ownership in a firm here. Um, but this is a little bit of the accounting behind it uh, to understand how the mechanics kind of work of buying and selling, and also why stock prices are a little bit more complex and dynamic uh, than simple accounting. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please do like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <laughs>